Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk about uh, some insights in social media marketing. I'm not an IT here, um, but um, I'll um, try to, to give you some marketing uh, points of view um, uh, regarding uh, social media. Because many of you will probably work for companies. Maybe you'll have to do some social media, or you'll you'll think of starting your own company and and, and want to uh, market your product. And I thought, well, maybe this might be a good moment to tell you a little bit more about social media insights. Um, my name is Erwin. I'm a lecturer here at uh, this very uh, 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 campus. I also uh, am an author of books on communication, social communication. I do the conversation management for, for this uh, department, and, and I also have a weekly podcast in, uh, in iTunes. Um, well, uh, this, this might be like a weird audience to talk about social media, because is there anything about social media that you don't know yet? Well, let's try that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, present you five insights, five ideas, five thoughts about social media that you might not have thought about before, and that might be interesting for all of you. Let's start with the first one. Social media is all about trust. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Belgian Trust Index. It's a yearly index that shows you how much trust the Belgian people have in their major um, <laughs> governmental and other uh, public. As you can see, the fire brigade people have 96% trust, doctors 91%, teachers, I'm, I'm blessed here, 85%. Um, police 71, well priests 17% <laughs> and politicians only 14%. So that's the Belgian Trust Index. Now I, um, I, I, I mani manipulated this, this a little bit because it's, it's really a top 20, it's not top 19. I only put 19 things there. Actually the Belgian Trust Index of 2013 also included how much people trusted social media. Does anyone want to guess? Which position that social media got last year, 2013? No. Let me show you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the top 20 of the Belgian Trust Index. Um, and as you can see, social media um, has 97% of trust. That's amazing. I'm not saying that you guys trust Mark Zuckerberg. Nobody trusts Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that you guys trust Facebook. You shouldn't trust Facebook. But people have an enormous trust in social media. And this is why. There is no social medium. There are only social media. We choose us. Every time we go to Facebook, we, we, we see that very simple um, um, interface. But within that interface, we see people that we follow, the people that we like, the people that are part of our own digital social network and whose opinions are important and whose opinions are not. The, the things that we follow on Facebook uh, the, and the ideas that we get from Facebook are, for many people, the most trusted opinions that they get. And if you have a product, if you have a company, and you can get into that in a very intimate space that social media is, then you're there but people trust you the most. If you, your company, or your product are able to become part of someone's digital social network, you can become part of the <coughs> trust. I'm going to elaborate on that in just a second. Inside two, there's too much information. And you're all information specialists, you've already got that. Um, um, the, 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 the police had a song about it in the, the early 80s. Uh, and, and still today, I mean, if you go from Twitter to Facebook to, to all the websites and RSS feeds that you follow and all the other input, there's so much information. The average person in Belgium on Facebook has 341 friends. But I'm guessing here that most of you actually have more than that. This is the average person. My mom has like 80 friends. But, but uh, many people from between 20 and 30 have 600 friends or more. Um, the average person in Belgium likes 172 pages. Many of you still like uh, 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 pages like Ik herinner nog dat een plop zal aan de mail was, etc. But still, oh, I see some recognition here. So it's one of the most followed pages in Belgium, which isn't part of a company. Um, together, these friends and pages produce numerous, of, numerous messages. Actually, 2,144 messages each day are, in general, put towards people in Belgium. 2,144 messages. That's a lot. Now, of course, if Facebook would display every single message, 
And of course, you, you, <laughs> Facebook wouldn't be interested. So what Facebook tries to do, Facebook tries to get to know you. And only after a while starts showing you those messages that Facebook thinks are the most important to you. It uses AdTrack, a very complicated formula that I'm not going to talk a little bit uh, too much about, but that you should know. This is the basic secret formula of Facebook. Facebook looks at every single message and decides whether you should see it or not based on these three factors. First one is affinity. Affinity, Facebook looks at the message and looks if you had interactions with that person previously. Have you liked that person? Have you answered the question that he or she followed? Have you ever shared one of, of, of his statuses? And if you've done that, Facebook will actually show you his or her status profiles more uh, than others. Second is the weight. Weight is, 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 is something very philosophical, but it, it comes down to this. A movie, according to Facebook, is more important than a photo. And a photo is more important than a text. And if something is shared, it becomes more important than something that, uh, something that people react to. And something that people react to is more important than, uh, that peop than that people uh, like something. Meaning that if you have your own Facebook website, you can get much more viewers and reactions by putting movies than just putting text. Uh, when I started doing the, 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 the conversations management right here, I put a lot of um, text ideas in. Right now, I almost never put text there anymore. I, I, every single text that I, I put on, on, on Facebook is actually a picture with a text comment. And since that I've started doing that, um, uh, we've seen our, our views increase by, by, by huge numbers. Third is decay. Decay is a factor based on how long ago the edge was created. And it's actually very simple. This graph shows time, this axis shows frequency, frequency and the older the message is, the, 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 the less a certain message is shown. I'll come back to that in just a second. Insight number three. You can measure almost everything using Facebook, Facebook or social media in general. This is a very special graph. Facebook put it out. Uh, when it was celebrated its 10th birthday in February. What these are, this is the calendar, January, February, March, April through December. And it's actually the peak breakup time. So it's when people change their status from, from married or engaged or in love to single. And you can actually see when the world breaks up. You can see that, that uh, just before now, uh, the beginning of spring, I mean, people start to feel all kinds of uh, cool things. It was a very dangerous people, uh, uh, very dangerous person, a uh, very dangerous moment. This one is actually a little bit scary. This is the 1st of April. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then um, during the summer, uh, almost nobody actually breaks off his or her relationship. But just before s summer, you see the small peak because nobody wants to go to to, to a, on a vacation with the very same old boyfriend or girlfriend or something, so you get rid of him or her just before the vacation starts. And also, this, this is an enormous peak. Nobody wants to be that cruel to say to his girlfriend or his, to his boyfriend uh, that he doesn't want to continue the relationships during the dark days of December. So what you'd want to do, you want to do them before that. Okay? <laughs> actually, uh, you, you can see it's here. The 25th of December is actually the very low point. Nobody, almost nobody, there are actually a couple of people, but almost nobody says to his girlfriend or boyfriend that he doesn't want to continue his relationship. Well, remember this one? I told you that Facebook can measure things. Well, you should if you if you if you're busy doing Facebook stuff. Uh, you can actually measure, for instance, uh, when your followers are online. There's, there are many there's programs that we use for that. We have Hunt, we use Hootsuite for that. Um, uh, you can measure it. But th these are in Belgium, the top three times when people are most online. This is might not might not include your age bracket. It's an average, but still, if you put number one uh, moments to put something online, it's Saturday at 10 o'clock at night. When you put something online on Facebook, Saturday at 10 o'clock, uh, it, it, it increases the chances of your message being viewed. Number two moment is Saturday at uh, 8 o'clock and Sunday at 7 o'clock. Um, actually, our peak moment here at uh, at Hantal is um, Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock which is like a moment when most students are actually here at school. Uh, I'm not saying what um, Anyway, insight number four. Let your competitor do the work. This is something that not many people realize, but let me show. This is a very important insight to have. Um, this is the general rule of the internet. If you're not paying for a service, then you're the product, you're not the customer. 
Uh, we are not customers of Facebook. We, we, some of you might be uh, who, who buy ads or something on Facebook. In general, we're the product. Why would Facebook allow you to make a page for free? What's, what's, is, is, is Facebook such a nice company that we can just make free, free pages to promote our, our products? No, of course not. A free page is actually a database of people who share the same interest in a product or service. I mean, every student that follows the page of, of our, 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 our university college here is actually a person who has a, a vested interest in this university college. This is how Facebook sees it. Imagine you are from Kota and you sell goldfish. And you create a free Facebook page about your pet store because you want to promote your pet store. You want to sell more goldfish. You want lots of followers. So what you do, you spend a lot of time doing all sorts of cool things to attract new followers. Facebook actions, giveaways, tag yourself in this picture with your favorite goldfish, etc. So you, you, you get lots, lots, lots of new followers. And you do a great job. At one point or other, you get 1,000 followers. What has just happened? Well, you've just given Facebook a free database of 1,000 potential customers. People who are from Kortrijk, people who trust you, people who like goldfish, and people who want to spend money on goldfish. That's what you just told Facebook. For free. You've done all the work for them. So what happens when another pet store in Kortrijk wants to start, start a Facebook page? Well, he has two options. He can do your work all over again, or of course, you can just pay Facebook to get access to your follower, followers. And that's actually the profits model that Facebook tries to do. It gives you the chance to make free web pages, give them lots of information about your customers or potential customers, and then it tries to sell those customers to your competitors. Um, you've just done all the work for Facebook, you've given your customers to Facebook and to your competitors for free. So Facebook rule number one is this one. When starting a page, always check if there's a competitor who is selling a similar product to a similar group of people. If that's the case, if, if, sorry, if it's not the case, don't ever advertise on Facebook. You'll get rubbish extra followers. You will probably not, you'll probably not get um, many interesting followers. But if so, then the best thing you can do is actually buy your followers from Facebook by using the database of your competitor. But maybe even smarter is trying to, to change a little bit about your formulas, we can actually attract a whole new set of people. But beware of the risks of doing that uh, 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 yourself. And that's all in the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I promise you a couple of insights. Social media is still brand new. It, it hasn't existed for 10 years, but in those 10 years, so many interesting things have happened, and I'm sure they will keep on happening for the next couple of decennia. Yeah? It changes almost every day with new media and new possibilities where everything is becoming more and more mobile. And, and economics has become almost un unlike economics, where, where people are, are, are thinking about how can I get life as much as possible because that can get me a return on investment. I want to end with this one, the insight number five. We don't have a choice, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have a choice on whether we do social media. If you're working for a company that doesn't do social media, go to your boss and talk to him tomorrow morning. If you are thinking of starting your own company or, for, or, 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 or um, introducing a product or an app or something like that, first thing you have to do is try and start thinking social. The question is not whether you do it or not. The question is how well do you do it. And I hope I've given you five interesting insights to help you a little bit with that. Thank you for listening.